the hits. Hello, and welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ana Mateo. This program is for English learners, so we speak a bit slower. And our stories are written especially for people learning English. Here are the stories we have for you on today's program. First, the education report. Dan Friedel talks about tenure in higher education. I will return with this week's words and their stories. Then Gregory Stockel will tell us about video calls used to help police handle mental health crises. Finally, Alice Bryant will talk about China's technology workers. But first, the education report. How valuable would it be to have a guaranteed job for the rest of your life? In the United States, few jobs come with lifetime appointments. Federal judges, including justices on the U.S. Supreme Court and College professors are on the short list. Professors can earn what is known as tenure. The idea of tenure got popular over 100 years ago, when university presidents at some famous schools decided it was important to protect professors from outside interference. The idea is that a professor with tenure. Is free to teach or do research, even if their state's leader does not like the subject. As a result, it is rare for a professor with tenure to be dismissed. Those who argue against tenure say professors might work hard, leading up to what is known as a tenure review. And then stop working as hard after their job is safe. In addition, some experts worry that tenure protects professors who are accused of bad behavior. Young professors who are hired for jobs where tenure is a possibility are said to have tenure track jobs. They often have a review after their fifth year. If they earn tenure, then they have a job that is largely guaranteed for as long as they want it. The review is extremely detailed. Professors are judged by other members of the university on the quality of their teaching, the amount of research they have done in their subject, and books and studies they have written. Professors at other schools write letters, and past students can add their thoughts. The idea of tenure has been in the news recently. Two well-known black professors recently made public disputes they had with the tenure process at some famous universities. Cornell West is a well-known professor who taught. Philosophy and African American Studies at Harvard. In February, he said Harvard rejected his request to be considered for tenure, although he had a good five-year review. West had a tenured position at Harvard in the past, but left the school in 2002 after a conflict with the university president. He went on to teach at Princeton University. He went back to Harvard in 2016. West said he would leave Harvard to teach at the Union Theological Seminary in New York City. Over the summer, reporter Nicole Hannah Jones also was involved in a dispute over tenure. Hannah Jones is the Pulitzer Prize-winning creator 
of the New York Times' 1619 Project and has received the famous MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. She was offered a position at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill that did not include tenure. Professors at the university's Hussman School of Journalism and students protested. Widespread criticism caused the university to reconsider and include tenure in its offer. Hannah Jones rejected the new offer and decided to join Howard University in Washington, D.C. She will use money from outside organizations to start a journalism center there. The tenure review is an important moment in a professor's career. Young professors often worry they will not do enough to get tenure, and they then worry that being denied tenure will be a bad mark on their record. One young professor, Jerry Kirsteins, teaches at the University of California in Santa Cruz. She said Twitter is full of comments from professors worried about their tenure review because there are a lot of us and not as many jobs. But being denied tenure can be a new beginning. Some professors are rejected for tenure, but go on to find a better place to work. One professor found a position that offered job security and supported her best work. Anne Berenger is an experienced chemistry professor at the University of California at Berkeley. Half of her job is tenured and half is not. Her status, she said, is unusual. She said her job is secure because it is difficult to imagine getting rid of half a person and not the other half. Before moving to California, she taught at universities in Illinois and Connecticut. She now helps graduate students think about their career path. Most start to plan their careers in their third or fourth year. At that point, they decide if they want to become a professor or work for a business that hires chemists. Students also decide if they want to center their career on teaching or research. In the past, universities often gave equal weight to a new professor's ability to carry out research, teach, and serve the university. If a professor was not good in one of those areas, they would be denied tenure. Now, however, some universities think about hiring professors who can spend more time in areas where they are strong. Jerry Kirsteins is one of Behringer's former chemistry students. She just started a tenure-track job in Santa Cruz. Kirsteins will teach chemistry, but one of her main jobs is to help the university revamp its chemistry program. She said she will do research on ways to teach chemistry, but she will not run a laboratory like many professors. Finding a job that's centered on chemistry education was a dream. Um, I feel incredibly lucky to have gotten what I've gotten. It's, it was lightning striking. <laughs> like, it's just not something I was expecting. Hannah Love is a philosophy professor at Portland Community College in Oregon. She was denied tenure at a different school early in her career. She was worried about what opportunities she would have after that. Now, however, she is happy at a community college because she can put more energy into teaching and helping students. She has a continuous appointment, which means if she continues to do good work, her job is safe. She spoke with VOA about her earlier disappointment. 
in retrospect, it's one of the best things that happened because I kind of always wanted to teach at a community college. I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, and professionally, it's a much better fit. Beringer, the Berkeley professor, said she would like to see non-teaching employees at universities considered with the same intensity. It might make the university better overall. So it's a, a filter that's pretty serious, which I don't, and I don't think we would do something that required both so much work and was so frequently negative. I've never seen anybody fired, ever. I'm Dan Friedel. And now, words and their stories from VOA Learning English. On this program, we explore words and expressions in the English language. We give examples notes on usage, and sometimes we even use them in a short story. For this week, we talk about something that we all use. A bed. Everyone likes different sleep conditions. Some like it dark and quiet. Others like to listen to sounds of nature as they fall asleep. Some like soft beds and some like hard beds. So today we talk about beds. We have several expressions that use this word. The first one we will talk about involves a flower, the rose. Imagine sleeping on a bed of roses. Roses smell nice, so that could be very pleasant indeed. Well, as long as the roses do not have thorns. Ouch. Well, if a bed of roses is nice, then no bed of roses is not. If something is no bed of roses, it is difficult or really unpleasant. And we have all had those experiences. I know I have. Once, I was asked to sing and play the ukulele for a special event. The event was to raise money for a homeless shelter, so I was happy to volunteer. I did not know the organizer well, but what could go wrong? The ukulele is such a happy instrument. Well, as it turned out, a lot could go wrong. The organizer was actually kind of mean and bossy. First, she picked all the songs, and they were not that great. So when we suggested other songs, she would yell. She would also yell at us if we played poorly. And this happened often, because many of us were just beginners. Then, on the night of our performance... It rained and was very cold. So only a few people came to hear us play. This put her in a very bad mood. But then something happy happened. Someone in the crowd joined in by playing the flute. But then she yelled at them too. In the end, I got sick and lost my voice for about a month. So let me tell you, the whole experience was no bed of roses. Now, if this woman had been unkind just once, I could say that maybe she got up on the wrong side of the bed. This means you are in a bad mood. You feel irritable. But it's not your usual way of feeling. Perhaps you just didn't get enough sleep. However, this woman was unpleasant at every practice. So it was more than just waking up on the wrong side of the bed. She was just no fun. Well, months later, 
she needed ukulele players to help in another performance. But none of us joined. Playing the uke, as it is sometimes called, is something we do for fun. And we did not want to get yelled at again. So this woman played alone and continues to play alone. You could say she made her bed, now she must lie in it. This means that a person has made a difficult situation and then must deal with the results or consequences. Usually we say this to someone who has put themselves in the difficulty and then complains about it. When you use this expression, you can also use the word sleep. She made her bed, now she must sleep in it. And you do not have to say the whole thing. Simply saying, you made your bed, is quite enough. Finally, bed is where we end up after finishing a long day. So it is not surprising that we also have a bed expression for finishing a project or task. When you put something to bed, you finish it. In fact, we are done with this words and their stories. So it's time to put this episode to bed. Until next time, I'm Anna Mateo. Next, let's hear from Gregory Stockel. Americans have been calling on police to change how they deal with citizens in crises, especially those with mental health problems. Police are usually the first to arrive at a serious incident and are trained to deal with crime and violent behavior. But a law enforcement agency in the central state of Illinois has found a new way to deal with mental health cases. It is using video calls to calm difficult situations. Restrictions ordered to stop the spread of the new coronavirus have left many people alone in their homes without support. Many people are unable to find mental health services or unwilling to go out and risk getting COVID-19. The Cook County Sheriff's Office has faced many emergency calls about suicide or other mental health crises recently. Sheriff Tom Dart leads the Cook County Sheriff's Office. In the United States, a sheriff is a law enforcement officer who serves part of a state that are not part of a city or town. Emergency calls to Dart's office involving mental health problems have increased by 60% this year. Dart said police officers are being asked more and more to arrive first to mental health cases. He said officers are being asked to do things they are not trained for or for which they have little training. Dart said some programs have mental health professionals riding in a vehicle with law enforcement officers. That works for smaller communities. But Cook County, which includes the city of Chicago, is very big. Dart asked, how many ambulances would we have to buy and how many would we have to hire to man them all? We wanted a tool for the officers to get that mental health expert on the scene immediately, 
said Ali Pitak Montgomery, a team director. So far, the department has 70 personal electronic devices. They are used to make video calls. The department bought 35 with aid money when the program began. It bought 35 more when it became clear the number of calls, which is now past 50, would increase. Sometimes a lack of wireless service or another reason has not permitted a video call. The department said this has happened 20 times. In those cases, officers set up a telephone call between the person in crisis and a mental health professional. Four mental health experts have been joined by four more to answer calls. Dart said the cost of the experts and the devices is much less than what it would cost to send out many mental health professionals with police. But such a program cannot work unless police officers are ready to accept it. Bonnie Bushing is an officer with the sheriff's office. She answered a call in which a man was striking his head on the ground to harm himself. When the man began threatening to use a knife, Bushing sent an officer to bring the device for a video call. She watched the man immediately calm down when he began talking to the woman on the other end. People spend a lot of time on electronic devices. They're comfortable with them, and they feel safer talking face-to-face -face with a person, said Patak Montgomery, who was on the other end of the call. She said that by handing the man the device, Bushing showed a level of trust. For Bushing, Questions about the device and concerns of what could happen if she forcibly restricted the man disappeared when the situation ended quietly. He gave me his hand and walked to the ambulance with me, she said. I'm Gregory Stockel. Thanks, Gregory. For our last story, here is Alice Bryant. Two major Chinese technology companies, DD Global and JD.com, set up labor groups for their employees this week. Also called unions, such groups are controlled by workers and designed to protect their rights and interests on the job. The creation of these unions is a major change in the technology industry in China where organized labor is very rare. DD Global is an online ride-sharing business. JD.com is an online marketplace. China's regulatory agency has been closely watching the country's biggest technology companies this year. Regulators have sharply criticized the industry for having policies that abuse workers and violate shoppers' rights. The regulatory agency has launched several investigations and ordered fines against some companies. The government is urging companies to set up programs to share wealth more fairly with workers. The push is part of President Xi Jinping's plan to ease inequality in China, the largest economy after the United States. At first, Didi's workers at its Beijing headquarters will supervise the union with guidance from the All-China Federation of Trade Unions, or 
A-C-F-T-U. That information is from two people who have knowledge of the matter. The people were not given permission to speak to media and asked not to be identified. A newspaper with a connection to the Beijing Federation of Trade Unions announced that JD.com established a trade union. The report included photos of the ceremony the company held, which was attended by many government officials. JD.com confirmed the news, saying that some of its local workplaces had created unions in past years. It said the new union's aim is to cooperate on planning and resources. Didi did not answer a request for comment. Didi has been criticized by state media for not paying its drivers fairly. The company said in April it would set up a driver's group to settle the wages problem. The company has also been the subject of an investigation by several Chinese officials since its $4.4 billion U.S. stock market listing in June. Didi and JD.com are believed to be the biggest technology companies in China to have set up company-wide unions. But officials in the Hubei area say unions have been set up there for workers of the companies Meituan and Alibaba's Alama. Meituan is an internet service that lets users order food, buy travel, book entertainment, book house cleaners, and do much more. Elama is an online service for ordering and delivery of food. Neither Meituan nor Alibaba answered Reuters' requests for comment. The two food delivery firms have been criticized in local media for their treatment of delivery workers. The companies do not give most of these workers basic social and medical insurance. In July, the ACFTU and seven other Chinese government agencies published guidance on protecting the rights of such contract workers. It also suggested unions play a major part in helping negotiate with companies. All unions in China are required to register with the ACFTU. But the agency has often been criticized for its inability to negotiate better terms for workers. Aidan Chao is a researcher for the China Labor Bulletin a workers' rights organization based in Hong Kong. He said the country's unions mostly avoid facing abusive policies at big companies. Instead, they deal directly with individual employees' problems on a case-by-case basis. They also provide more general support to workers, such as programs for health and safety. Last month, China's highest court ruled that a common employment policy known as 996 violates the law. 996 means working from 9 in the morning to 9 at night, six days a week. Chinese technology companies are known for expecting employees to follow the 996 system. I'm Alice Bryant. Thanks, Alice. And that's our program for today. Thank you for listening. Some content in this program was provided by the Associated Press or Reuters News Agency. 
And don't forget to join us again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Ana Mateo.